Hey guys, this is Laura of The Knit Girls. We are going to review the device by Questionable Origin. This is part of a series that we're going to do reviewing a bunch of different spinning wheels and this is the first. In a disclosure, this was sent to us by Abby, who's the producer, Abby Frankamount, of this wheel. So we are going to review the device by Questionable Origin. Here we go. All right, so the device comes in a case. The case is around 13 and a half by seven when it's seated. It's pretty heavy, but it's very all enclosed. So this is something that you could travel with. Um, it's very portable, it folds up, so it wouldn't take up a lot of space if you're in a smaller space situation. I've already taken out the power source and plugged it in in the back. So that's already done. This is what the inside of the case looks like. We have it kind of messily thrown in there. It comes with a flyer. The device uses MajaCraft products, so you can use any of your MajaCraft flyers um, that would fit the normal head of the MajaCraft. So I believe the Wild Flyer, um, this flyer, and then the one that's more open, um, what's that called? The E-hook? Is it an E-hook? Delta Orvis. Delta Orvis. Thank you, Leslie. Um, flyer. So... That is not how that goes. This, uh, the Total head hook. comes up and you just twist it into place. It's got a little screw knob. It has a foot pedal. Or it also has the option of not using the foot pedal. You put this into place and you don't need to use the foot pedal. Um, you just click it on and off at that point plug in the foot pedal because I'm a foot pedal kind of girl. It plugs in right to the front. All these parts are manufactured um, in Abby's studio, her husband's studio type area. So the questionable origin is made in the United States around the motor and the back goes to the drive band. Oh, can you hear me? We took out the bobbin because I'd already put it together. Um, it does come with two Acreworks bobbins that would fit a MajaCraft. And then I need to lock this back into place. So there's my Scotch tension knob. It does use a Scotch tension knob, which is located here on the side to make adjustments. We've already oiled. So. And Laura's holding the rear of the tool head here. Yeah. That's the point where you twist against. And that's um, common with all the MajaCraft flyer setups. It comes with a cute little Acreworks um, threader. You can run this off of power, like plug it into your wall, which is how we have it now, or it does have a battery feature. So um, it comes with these batteries that you can put in here and it will run off the battery feature as well. And if I'm at home, oh. These are the rechargeable batteries and it also comes with the station for recharging. So I can show charging. you without yep. dropping. So when you're not using it, you can pop them in there and recharge them and then put them up here. The ribbon will help you pop them out when they're finished, um, when they're empty. All right, so we, because we have it unplugged, we're gonna switch it to plug. There is a toggle switch in the front. The toggle switch is up for S direction, down for Z direction. There's also um, a twist knob that starts the device. I'm gonna have Leslie pass me. That's some hobbly hoy battlings. So I'm going to start spinning one of those. Left that out a little bit. It's been hanging out in my house for a while. All right. So I have it going Z. I actually want it S. Because that's how I like to spin my singles. The knob on the side does adjust um, to go faster. Right now I have it at 9.57. There's... Um, a little digital display that tells you how fast you're going, which is nice because if you stop, then you can kind of get it back to that same point um, when you resume. And I can use the foot pedal to stop, 
or if I was using this knob, I could do the same. Um, keep going. I'm gonna be quiet for a second so you can hear how loud it is. So it's very, very quiet. Um, I'm actually pretty much at the lowest speed that it's going to go. So this is about how quickly the device, how slowly the device goes, and it will go a lot faster. Let me stop it for a second and then I'll really crank it up. I feel like with the take up, you could make this um, go very fast. <laughs> Whew. Generating wind power. I'm all crunkled now. So a way to, if you do that, accidentally go too fast, you can actually draft out a little bit further and that twist will just follow down your draft. Yeah, that's crazy fast. So this is about as slow as it'll go. Um, and then I can kind of get rid of a little bit of that twist and catch back up, let it wind back on. So that is the device in action. Um, it is very, very quiet. It's very portable. Abby says that she's flown with it in the United States and abroad to Germany with no issues. It comes in this case, so everything's pretty much self-contained, especially if you break down your bobbins. You can pretty much fit everything in this. It is pretty heavy. I want to say, maybe we'll weigh it later, mm -hmm. but I'm thinking it's probably in the 15 to 20 pound range. Um, so we're going to run through real fast. What we're going to do with all the wheels we review is we have a list of what we what we questions we ask ourselves when we look at wheels. So I'm going to let Leslie start reading those questions. Ooh. Okay, so now Laura and I are just going to go through the questions. Laura wrote up this really spiffy little... <laughs> document on things we ask ourselves about. And I'm going to make that a page on the Knit Girls, um, but the site, but also on our Ravelry group. So when you're looking at wheels, you can kind of go through these questions to ask yourselves as you look. Because these are pretty personal questions. Yeah. Uh, okay, so question number one. What kind of yarn do you typically craft with or do you want to make? Would this require a large orifice or bobbin, a slower or higher speed, or a certain type of drive? Um, and the reason Laura mentions this as something to consider is there are some more textured yarns that require a larger orifice. Your standard orifice on a shocked wheel or even a Maja Croft wheel, you know, they're not going to accept felted pom-pom balls through the orifice. So that's a... Yeah consideration. Right, it's some thick and thin where the thick parts are pretty right. large or correspond where it's pretty large. And what I run into the fact that when I need larger orifices a lot of times is when um, I'm flying and you're running two or three flies of a larger yarn right. group. So this wheel um, does do more quick paced spinning. It's meant for spinning quickly. This is the slow, this is 560. So this is about as slow as it's going to go. Um, I really cranked it down. So you can see that the flyer is pretty, it's moving pretty fast, even at the slowest speed. So this would not be a wheel that I would think of um, purchasing for art yarn spinning, if that's something that you're into, or for, um, spinning like super bulky or bulky or even uh, worsted singles because on those you really want less twist going into those items. Yeah I think that that's a valid point and it's one of the things that I wanted to make sure to mention was this wheel does fast really well. Yes. So if you have goals of being a production spinner and you know just being able to crank out a thousand yards a day then yeah, this wheel might be for you. Um, but if you prefer to be able to control your wheel more exactly, you really probably need a treadle wheel. Um, if you want to be able to stop and start or slow and speed up, you know, within the same 10 or 15 seconds, 
you probably need a treadle wheel, and that isn't an option for this particular wheel. So, um, what else this wheel would do really, really well, I feel like, is plying, especially mm -hmm. if the, I might try the wild flyer on it later. I think it'll fit. I think I read that it'll fit. Um, it's not one of the flyers that comes standard with it, but it would be great for treadling, or for, not for treadling, for plying, because it has especially. a bobbin. It does. It, this bobbin, um, will hold around four ounces, so, um that allows you to ply up to four ounces as well. Okay, so the next question. Okay. <laughs> what kind of lifestyle do you have? Do you want to take your wheel with you as you travel? Do you have children or animals that a wheel will need to be protected from? <laughs> so this wheel, I feel like, is great for people who have children and animals um, if you're setting it up high enough. Pearl's in the other room. Pearl's my puppy, if you're not familiar with her. We have her locked up because it drives me crazy when animals are just like in reviews. I don't know. I'm weird. So, um, one of the things, and I think this will do a woolly wander head too, thinking about that as well. It should. I think it fits all the, the standard heads yeah. of the Mondra Craw. Um, so lifestyle wise, this, if you have it up high enough, is out of the zone of pet danger. Um, if you have it lower, then there are hooks that could be very easily bumped into. Um, it does plug in, or you can use the batteries. So mm -hmm. if you have kids or puppies, you could, or animals in general, you could be using the batteries, and then you don't have that cord running through. Yeah, and so you don't that, necessarily have to have any cord because you can yeah. use the hand control versus the pedal. So that would keep it, especially if you have it elevated. We have it sitting on top of um, a tray table. Yeah, like a TV tray table. Um, so I think it's great for portability. It's easy to put away. It's not very hard setup. It's a pretty quick setup. I think yeah. we did it in less than two minutes. And I think that especially if you are in a place where you don't have a ton of room for a castle wheel or a, a standard. Yeah, if you're in like an wheel, apartment or something, yeah, this would be perfect. You know, a thousand square feet is a luxury to you. This is very compacted and will, you know, fold down into a much smaller space than a typical treadle wheel. Now you do have to have a space that you can sit it on top of of some kind. Right. Um, it's not a standalone, so it does need something to sit on top of, whether it's that's a chair facing backwards, another chair. A cardboard box. Or yeah. whatever you need it to sit on top of. Yeah, it does need to be elevated in order to use well. Um, it, it is licensed, or it, it, I'm sorry, that's the wrong phrasing. Abby does say that it travels well, Laura mentioned that already. Um, it does look a little bit like a bomb when it's all <laughs> folded up in its little case. It's a turtle shell um, case. It's a waterproof case, yeah. too, or so water resistant. It is very well protected, but it does look a little suspicious. Um, I've never traveled with it, so I, I can't attest to that. Um, I assume they would probably want you, you know, TSA would probably just want to look at it, but... Yeah, um, when I've flown with the Hanson before, they just have you bring it out, and I found that um, if I travel with actual, like, spinning on right. my bobbins, then people can kind of see they what's going on, yeah. and it goes a little bit more smoothly as a whole. It is small enough to fit under the seat in front of you on the oh, airplane, yeah. so size-wise, there, there's no problem there. Um, we sort of already answered this, but question three, how much space do you have for a wheel? This is definitely one of the lowest footprint size-wise oh, yeah. wheels that we've come across, um, especially being all self-contained, and you can sort of pack everything about the wheel inside the case with the exception of the bobbins. Um, there's just not enough space internally to cram If you it. fold them down, supposedly you can fit both flyers and two bobbins in there. It'd be a tight fit. It would be a tight fit, but supposedly you can do it. Uh, okay. And you'd have to be neater packers than us. <laughs> um, question four. What accessories do you find essential to a wheel? So if you need a huge um, bulky flyer that would hold... 10 ounces. I don't think that's capable on this wheel. Um, I think the Wild Flyer for Maja Craft will fit on it. I'm looking over there because I have one on my rose right now. Mm -hmm. And it looks like it's going to fit. And that holds around four, well, six ounces, I would say. It's a little bit bigger than this bobbin. So six to eight, maybe. Uh, I'd say six. 
So, so. because this, um, most wheels are limited on the size of the bobbin and the flyer because of the way that the mother of all is set up, the sort of framework that holds the flyer and the bobbin. Um, and that isn't necessarily the case here, but there is still a size restriction from the flyer from to the bottom of the, the case. But I'm pretty sure that's going to fit. Yeah, no, I definitely think the wild flyer would fit, but um, some enormous. Their problem. overhead flyer would not fit. Um, Majacraft also makes an overhead flyer that's even larger, mm -hmm. and I don't think that would fit. Um, it doesn't. There are some accessories for wheels, like they have a quill front, stuff like that. I'm not certain that that would work with this wheel. Um, I this, think a woolly winder would work with this wheel. I think so, yeah. That's an accessory that a lot of people enjoy. Woolly winder has um, a gear that moves up and down and fills your... So when I stop, I'm moving this because my mother yells at me if I don't. <laughs> and it creates messy bobbins that it can actually collapse on itself. Um, the woolly winder actually has a device that moves up and down like so a it fills spring. Your bobbin so evenly. it fills it evenly. I'm pretty sure that would work with this. Um, I, Obviously, you can't add some wheels have like the skein winder that attaches to them. This would not be a wheel that would have that. This does not come with a lazy Kate. No. Um, although you can make one relatively inexpensively, and Abby Frankmont has um, information on her blog about how you can make one with like knitting needles and a cardboard case. It also comes with two bobbins, mm -hmm. so it would be something that I would have to invest. Um, <laughs> yarn just fell in the background. <laughs> Um, I would have to purchase a couple more bobbins mm -hmm. because if you're going to three ply something, you need at least four bobbins. If you're going to two ply, you need, at least you need three, 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 unless bobbins. you're going to wind off, yeah. which you can always do as well. Um, but everything you need for the most part comes with it. Yeah, I would say so. And having the rechargeable batteries is part of the package. Is oh yeah, that's nice awesome. Do you, what is your budget for a wheel? So this wheel retails for around $1,200. Um, there are e-spinners that are less expensive than that. There are e-spinners that are more expensive than that. So um, right now I feel like there's a wait list for this wheel. I know Spunky Eclectic sells it. And there's a small wait list for the wheel. So that would be something to um, think about. Maybe you could save up for it. Or it is uh, more expensive. Um, wheel twelve hundred dollars is pretty much on the higher, not the highest end, but it's and, and most like wheels retail for around seven hundred, eight hundred for treadle yeah. style wheels. Um, that being said, the electric wheels, at least from the experience I've had, are either really cheap or like the electric $1, wheels dollars or more. Yeah, um, and that's not a reflection on. Um, quality necessarily. I think that it's all just in what you prefer, what you like aesthetically, um, what sort of accessories you want included and, and that you're willing to purchase. Yeah, and this does come with two flyers um, and two bobbins. The Hanson, I feel like, now I have an older Hanson. Does this come with two flyers? Yeah, I think. Or does it just come with this one? Just Is this it just one? one? Okay. Mm -hmm. The, I'm sorry, the Majacraft wheels come with both flyers standard. Um, so you can buy more flyers for it um, and more bobbins. As you sort of yeah. find out what kind of yarn that you per prefer to spin and you can gear your um, accessories more towards that niche. So we have an older, we both have older Hansons mm -hmm. and they were around a thousand dollars each in the maple. So it's right on par. But they also don't have the tachometer in there yeah. that tells you the speed. Um, That's the a new feature ones, that you can add. Yeah. Um, so this, that is, you know, standard and first production. And the battery least. pack for the Hanson is extra. Yeah. You would have to purchase. Uh, okay. Question six. Do you have an aesthetic preference? Do you, you want your wheel to look like a piece of art? A modern look or look like Sleeping Beauty's wheel? So this wheel it looks like what it looks like. Yeah. It is a very functional looking piece of equipment. It's not a beautiful piece but you sort of trade out some of that beauty for the portability, for the durability. Um, yeah it's for, definitely very durable. Yeah for being able to be very precise with your tachometer on your speed. Um, but that is, you know, that is a consideration. I, Laura has other wheels that I think are absolutely beautiful. <laughs> uh, 
that I wouldn't necessarily want to own, but I love the way that they look. So it really just depends on your preference. Yep. And Leslie has the flat iron, which is isn't beautiful, but it's a functional wheel right. that's, that works really, really well, mm -hmm. but it's not what I would consider the most beautiful wheel in the world either. So that's just whether or it's, not that's important to you. Yep. That's what it is. Uh, question seven. Do you want to treadle with one foot, two feet, or no feet? So this is a no feet treadling situation, mm -hmm. um, which I found really helpful when I had my knee injury. I spent a lot on e-wheels because I didn't have to treadle, so I could still spin, but not have to utilize my knee. Yeah, and you can even set it up so you don't use your foot at all to turn yeah. it on and off. You can just use the speed dial, mm -hmm. so that's another consideration if you have um, disabilities or you know anything or you just want to be able to sit in bed and spin um, it would take some careful manipulation but yeah you could do that with this wheel yep. um, question eight how much time do you want to spend assembling your wheel or getting it to work do you mind spending time doing repairs like switching drive bands or do you want it to be a quick process so this is a very quick process mm -hmm. um, the drive band would be very easy to replace Everything on this wheel, I feel like, is very easy to replace as a whole. Um, now, purchasing parts, you would have to get them specifically through Abby. So right. there's only going to be one person that you could buy um, parts through, probably. Right. So that's at least at this point, yeah. it's not it's not a widely enough used wheel yet that someplace like the Woolery would have parts for it. Or um, if you're at a festival and something right. breaks. You could probably admit, put something together, but... But that being said, um, the parts that you would personally be able to replace are very easily done. The drive yeah. band, the tension, um, those sorts of things are very... I mean, you have to disassemble it every single time that you put it away, so you're very familiar with the process. Yeah. Anything more intricate, you know, like the, the motor or the tool head or something, you're probably going to want to defer to somebody who knows what they're doing. Yeah, or ship it back to Abby. Right. But it's a pretty simple process. It's around two minutes to mm -hmm. put up. It as long as it's not it. your first time and you have no yeah. idea what you're doing. That took us about 20. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but um, but once you learn what's going on, mm -hmm. it's a pretty fair, it's a fairly easy process. And mm -hmm. it would be fairly, some wheels, like the drive band, you have to take apart the wheel to get to the drive right. band. That's not the case here. Yeah. There are some where it is a little bit more laborious to replace parts, but this is um, pretty quick. Yep. Uh, that's all the questions. Awesome. I did want to just mention, we did talk about it already, but um, Laura is comfortable spinning at what I would consider crazy fast speeds, and that isn't even half as fast as this can go. Um, she's at 1,000 um, RPMs. Uh, yeah, 1,059. Whereas I'm more comfortable spinning more slowly, and that is one thing this wheel doesn't do great. It does, it can spin more slowly, but it it doesn't have the sort of variability that it does with higher speeds. Um, that's just a, a personal note, and if that's not important to you and you prefer spinning, you know, more rapidly, then that's not something you would even be concerned about. Cool. Do you have any other parting final thoughts? No, we're going to do um, one of the questions I opened up on Instagram for some questions that people had. And one of the major questions, the main questions that was asked over and over again was, how does this compare to the Hanson? So I'm going to pull over my Hanson um, so y'all can hear a little bit side by side or back to back mm -hmm. what they sound like. My Hanson does have the woolly winder head on it right now, so I'm going to switch that out real fast. So we're comparing apples to apples for the most part. I will tell you that the Hanson does have... A larger bobbin mm -hmm. um, so that is going to cause a little bit more noise because it is like a six ounce to eight ounce mm -hmm. bobbin versus a four ounce bobbin okay so okay. we'll be back in a bit all right so I have my Hanson on its Sukka bag and we actually have it sitting on top of an ottoman so it's high enough for y'all to see um, the the Hansen, so this is a Hansen e-spinner, and we'll do a more in-depth review of this in a little bit. It, this is the maple. I actually tie it down to my Zucca bag, which is a little portable bag that everything fits inside of. Because I have animals and they like to, this is usually shorter. It's around, what, three feet tall, I would say? Two feet. Two feet tall. 
Um, it also can be used to travel, and it can you can sit on it up to like 250 pounds. So in airports, I put everything in it, and then I sit on top of it if it's a crowded situation. Or you can actually sit in a chair and spin on top of it. So I really like my Zucca bag um, for the Hansen, and probably the device would work with it pretty well as well. Um, I'm not certain it would fit inside. And this is the professional version. There's two versions of this bag. But that's not what you're here for. We are going to run the Hansen. I'm going to run it at about the same speed. I don't have the tachometer. They do sell it for this. But just you can get an idea of sound-wise. And I'm going to be quiet. So that's the Hansen. And then this is the device. device. So I would say the device is a little bit quieter. Um, I would, I've taken classes with the Hanson before and it's not been an issue. Um, the sound on it's pretty low, so it's not really an issue. And it does have the bigger bobbin, so it's not exactly comparing apples to apples because it is a larger surface area. Um, and this is the older AcreWorks bobbin. I can tell because it's got the silver on it as well. If you guys have any other questions about the device, we'll be happy to answer them to the best of our ability. Abby does have a frequently asked questions area on her website, and uh, we will link that in the review as well. Anything else that you want to add? No. Okay, I think that's it. So this is the device by Questionable Origin. It retails for $1,200 in the U.S. It is manufactured in the U.S. Um, so, so if you're looking to just purchase U.S., this is one of those things. And we will review, we'll be back and review probably the Hanson in a couple weeks. Thanks, y'all.